So John, we uh, we introduced the port of vSAN over RDMA here in a, in a recent release of vSAN. What would be your uh, maybe top tips if, if you have a customer that's really interested in using vSAN over RDMA, what would you point them to in terms of you know making that a successful deployment? So there is a, a blog and a um, on this topic, vSAN 7 RDMA support. Just some quick things to note about. Um, please go use the vSAN VCG. So historically, you just go there for drives, but go there to shop for NICs. We're doing extended support and validation. Uh, there are real uh, RDMA clusters that are being created by our partners to validate and make sure these NIC families are going to work. Um, and we have recommended um, within that, we're, we've tested those and tested driver and firmware levels. Uh, what you're also going to find are some other things you need to think about. Talk to your switch vendors and make sure the switches you're buying are going to support RDMA over converged Ethernet V2. That's the specific RDMA implementation. Uh, this is opinionated on the underlay. So this is going to require specific settings on like say iWarp that still uses uh, legacy TCP that we don't support at this time. Um, do note there are some switch settings you'll need to make. So things like uh, priority flow control, make sure that's tagged with three. Um, you'll need data center bridging. You're probably going to want enterprise congestion control configured. If you go to your switch vendor, they typically have a good uh, white paper already on configuring the switch for RDMA usage uh, and for, our, for Rocky V2. So go follow those settings. Um, and the other thing also is health checks, health checks. So the vSAN health check actually has an RDMA configuration. So even once you turn it on, it doesn't just try to turn on and if RDMA isn't there, start dropping all your packets. vSAN will only switch over to RDMA if it if it detects that it can actually work end to end correctly. If you try to add a host that doesn't support it to a cluster, it'll fall back to TCP. The health checks will tell you why. So there's a tab called host with RDMA configuration issue. And that'll show you, hey, your, your priority flow control setting is wrong or you're, we're not detecting DCB or so forth. So use that as a mechanism for doing your troubleshooting. That's you know one step above having to go all the way to driver CLI tools. And then lastly, uh, the vSAN performance service. Go take a look there for packet errors and things like that. That can point you to issues um, with packet loss. Uh, check some, maybe you have a bad cable. So um, check that out. Mm -hmm. All right, so it, it sounds like then with the enhanced capabilities there that you're getting with vSAN over RDMA, you know, lower CPU utilization, uh, possibly lower uh, latency as seen by the guest VMs, you maybe just need to be a little bit more uh, careful on uh, some of the configuration settings uh, that you may have in the switches and the actual uplinks. Yeah, the, the benefits are definitely there. I think um, the, future, the future of all storage um, is some type of RDMA transport. Um, but you know, this is something we're adding, you know, it's more than just telling your networking team, I need a VLAN. So we're going to have to, to make sure we phase into this. 